You know, you and I have talked about this a lot. You know, there's a big emphasis on diversity and inclusion. And I'd like to say that the game of hockey has always been diverse. It's not as diverse as we'd like it to be, but it's always been diverse. What it hasn't been uh, is inclusive. And I think we are at a point where we have to find a way to make the game more inclusive because the more inclusive the game is, the more opinion you have and different perspectives you will have about the game of hockey. I said to Kwame, you know, I don't see you as black. Um, I don't see Tara as a woman. And then I realized there's your white male privilege. You know what, Ron? You don't have to see that because you don't need to see that. Mm -hmm. and, and you told me, Kwame, an amazing story about when the kids throw back to Hockey Night in Canada, as a general rule, they're often all white. And if they're not all white, the whites often have the speaking part. And it's mm -hmm. the same with our Rogers Hometown Hockey. We're so proud of being inclusive, but how many times do we uh, get people of color to pick the three stars? And well, I liked what you said about recognizing your privilege, and I, I think that each and every one of us has to take stock of that. I recognize that I am a cisgendered, straight, white woman, and with that comes a certain amount of privilege. Welcome back to Andrew Says. I wouldn't lie to you, except for maybe this once. It's a vibe up here in Canada. Can we still say that if it's about social justice? It's a vibe. Maybe it's a John Travolta vibe for looking at my shirt. The first two guests on this topic on Hockey Night in Canada, are non-hockey players. Hey, here's an idea. Let's get two people in the entertainment industry to tell us how profitable being woke can be. <laughs> um, we're in a very important moment in the world of hockey and the growth of hockey, and I think it's very important that the children know that they have a safe space in the world of hockey, and we provide that for them so that you know they have the ability to know that if something happens to them, they can speak up. Akeem Alou, is, he's going to go down in history as one of those people who helped change the game of hockey and make it progress to a better and safer place. A safe space in hockey. See, here's one of, quickly, here's one of my first problems with this whole thing. Brain damage is okay. Shattering your ankles is okay. Paralysis, possibly. Could even get your neck cut by a skate. This has happened in the NHL before. Broken bones, it's all okay. But mean things being said to me one out of every 10,000 times. This is not, this is not acceptable. Not okay. Keep your hate speech out of my campus. As you know, later this evening, I'm going to be speaking at a gala fundraiser for girls hockey. And so what I've been thinking a lot about is, um, you know, the gratitude that I feel for getting to a certain point as a woman in my career in hockey. And for those of us, the responsibility that we all hold to now lift people up around us. I think it just can't be relegated to us and them at it's, this It's point. hard to just say, you know, I'm going to talk about uh, issues in the black community or the indigenous community or in the LGBTQ community without having those people represented at the table. So we have to do a better job of making sure the game is more inclusive and it will become more diverse as well. So in less than one minute, we went from the actual issue, which was racism against a black guy, to gay people, to women, to natives, to the game just needs to have conversations about inclusions, you guys. Inclusion, diversity, it's all of our strengths. Counterpoint, hot take, no. <laughs> This is sports. How about just no racism as it is in your day-to-day -day life? Racism bad. Seems like, seems like a good idea to me. Now, believe it or not, uh, Andrew says, viewers, I used to play a lot of basketball most of my life. From the third grade on, well into college, and uh, I, I played basketball, believe it or not. Uh, bring in Bill Nye. Now you know. And through pranks against me, uh, being called white boy all the time, which is a racial slur, whether you want to believe it or not, uh, or being picked last because they assume that because I'm a not tall white guy that I sucked, which a fair assumption, mind you, even though I didn't completely suck, at no point did myself or any other white guy say, you know what, guys, uh, we need to have a talk, an inclusionary talk about what it is to be white and to feel included in the sport of basketball. There's too many black coaches. I've had too many black players on my team. And we need to have a talk about what it, in my white feelings. That's what we need to talk. Let's talk about race in sports. That never happened. Now, the problem with all of this is that there is no rebuttal. Does the, and they don't present it that, they don't present it as if there can even be a rebuttal to any of these points. This is just how it is and you have to accept it. 
does the NBA need to become more black? Because it has it has over 70% black players. Do they need diversity and inclusion training? The NFL, same thing, 70%. You can see on these charts. This is all because one guy is being a dick, <laughs> unfortunately. Not sure if he's racist. I don't know him or not. It sounds like he, he could be, but just being a dick. But where did this all come from? Don't worry, there's more diversity training from the Hockey Night in Canada people to come. But let's fill in the blanks for those people who aren't aware. aware. That would be probably United States because they, they don't care about as much hockey. Um, this was actually sent to me by one of you people, so I thank you. I thank you, Yannick. Here he is. Look at that beauty. Look at this beautiful man, Yannick. I like how, look in the bottom right corner where the likes are. Someone liked the photo with his name, Shopper's Drug Mat. <laughs> That's a solid name. So thanks to Yannick, he sent that to me on Instagram, at Andrew Does. Send me your stuff on there if you want to bring any videos to my attention, like Yannick did. So, enter former Calgary Flames player Akeem Alou, born in Nigeria. Not a great player, actually only played uh, seven games in the NHL. He was good in his junior days. Uh, he was decent in the minors, which is where this alleged incident happened. I only say alleged for legal reasons, because of the deep state. Uh, what seems like it did happen, because he alleged it with witnesses. That this coach, Bill Peters, quote, dropped the end bomb several times towards me in the dressing room in my rookie year because he didn't like my choice of music. And as far as I've read, uh, it was something on the lines of stop or turn off that N word music. You know, that thing that I'm sure many people like myself who like rap have heard say from old white guys or uh, an, an old black father of a friend of yours or, or African guys. I know several, several African guys who have said stuff like that. It's kind of a foolish statement, uh, just because you don't like rap, it doesn't all sound the same. Uh, would you say that turn off that hick music against country? Maybe, I guess you would. But this guy, this coach, Bill Pierce, is clearly not liked by a lot of players, because since this investigation started, other people have made claims against him. Uh, very me too of them, but uh, <laughs> hockey players aren't usually ones to complain, so I take this uh, legitimately. Quote, while the Flames were conducting their investigation, others claimed Peters kicked and punched players behind the bench during his recent time with the Carolina Hurricanes. So, as a bit of a hothead uh, when it comes to playing sports, especially hockey, uh, I wouldn't want to play for this guy. You're touching me now, like you're you're hitting me, like I'm not your child. I'm like you don't get to do what you want with me. Sounds like an idiot to me. Now I want to be real clear about my opinion on this, and that I don't treat this as a Colin Kaepernick situation where it's completely fraud and obviously done for money and attention and fame. There are real gripes about this in this situation, so I'm not comparing Alou to that, and I want to make that clear. My problem is, not only the fact that this happened 10 years ago, and we were just hearing about this, but other players have come and gone that have faced racism, and it wasn't this international uh, incident that it now is. Wayne Simmons, for example, to bring the harshest example into it, great player, actually, a much better player than Alou. Been in the NHL a long time, still is. Had a banana thrown at him. Can you think about the gravitas? Is that the right word? The gravity of that. Where he, you're seeing it now. During a shootout years ago, somebody actually threw a banana about at him um, about around where he was taking the shot as, as you can see. He didn't cry. He didn't complain. And the person who did it was arrested for being a trash person. I'm assuming there's a law against throwing things on the ice interfering with a public event, something like that. End of story. Now, is the fact that Alou wasn't good and it was 10 years ago and now they're bringing this up suspicious? Well, yes it is, Kent. Do I think this is going to end up with the NHL giving money to some sort of corporation or organization with a progressive political agenda? Why, yes I do, Andrew says. But does hockey have a diversity problem? Inherently, no, it doesn't. And I'm sorry, be to, sorry to be the one to break the bad news to you. It just doesn't come up in in hockey. It doesn't come up in most sports. Like I said, with basketball, football, mainly black guys, it's not coming up where uh, let's talk about our race. Uh, people are specifically excluding you because of your race. And if it has happened, well, we don't have any real evidence of it. We just have hearsay, as you're going to see in these stories that. Uh, Hockey Night in Canada brings up individual individual instances of racism are bad. I will not support them ever. 
But that doesn't mean the entire sport needs a rehaul and we need to have all these conversations with adults about racism being bad. This is a sports league and a TV network getting pressured by media and uh, activists for political reasons. People see an opportunity to gain power and they're taking it. And since Canada is weak, and by the accounts of my friends and I, a recent analysis of worldly politics, Canada is now the last bastion for weak, woke SJW politics. So it's going to work. I said to Kwame, you know, I don't see you as black. Um, I don't see Tara as a woman. And then I realized there's your white male privilege. You know what, Ron? You don't have to see that because you don't need to see that. Mm -hmm. and, and you told me, Kwame, an amazing story about when the kids throw back to Hockey Night in Canada, as a general rule, they're often all white, and if they're not all white, the whites often have the speaking part, and it's mm. the same with our Rogers hometown hockey. We're so proud of being inclusive, but how many times do we uh, get people of color to pick the three stars? And Ron, I, do I need to remind you that you're talking about hockey? None of this comes into play. This isn't a point of view. This is just completely stupidity. This isn't, I just disagree with his opinion. This does not make any sense. This is new stuff that has come up, these, these viewpoints have come up in the last 10 years, and now he's just taking it because he's a sucker, and he's just running with it because he wants to be Mr. Corporate Shill. He wants to so desperately not be seen as racist. Uh, there have been black, black players all through the 90s and 2000s, and, and if they faced uh, racial prejudice, then that's stupid and wrong. But no one ever talked about the fact that they were black. This was never a mainstream thing where it's like, um, I don't know. He's a black player, so l let's uh, let's not consider playing him. And when you say structural racism, which is, of course, this broad term that he'll never be able to defend, he'll never have to defend, no one is ever going to question him on it, so he's allowed to say just these nonsensical uh, statements with no actual meaning, that would have to mean that there are barriers in put in place to prevent a person from being able to play in the league or play in the sport based on their race. How did non-white players like Alou, who aren't very good, get into league if that's the case? Because if that was the case, you'd have to think they'd have to be exceptionally good, like Jerome Aginla, like Anson Carter, who we'll see coming up. You'd have to be very good to break the barriers to get into it. No, because there's tons of crappy players who aren't white. Obviously, they're not crappy to get into the NHL. You have to be really good. But once they're there, they're not performing that great, and they don't last very long, like Alou, who played seven games. I hate to actually have to bring him down for this because it's an incredible achievement to play in the NHL and still play at a professional level, whether it's just the minor leagues. But how did he get in if he wasn't a superstar, if there's these structural barriers? How did any of these guys get in? It's not a thing. Is the <laughs> It's not a thing is the answer to your question. This is just the insanity. So let's see what actually uh, former players have to say about this. Anson Carter, like I mentioned, a good player in his day, 20-plus uh, goal sc scorer, multiple years. I always liked having him on my team in the video games because he's a good like second or third line scorer, good on the power play. Scored a gold medal, medal winner for Canada at the International Championships at one point. Uh, we're now getting into, I want to remind you, we're now getting into diversity training part two. These are two separate segments. Uh, but before we get to that, I'd like to mention my Patreon, just a dollar a month, people, just one dollar a month. I upload exclusive interviews there, uh, scenes that didn't make it into other videos, my man on the street stuff like that. Uh, like and subscribe. Please share because we are downranked by YouTube. Fun fact, if you're not CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, ABC News, purposely they rank you down because they want other people to watch these other channels. Take it away. But, you know, Calgary Flames acknowledged, identified, and removed the problem. Uh, but where do we go from here? Usually when there's circumstances like this, uh, the hockey community or society in general talks about, you know, talks about the problem. But what's the solution? So my solution to this is I think we need more visible minorities at the ownership level, at the uh, management level, and on the ice. So uh, I'm on the front grounds, so I'm on the front lines day to day on the ice with the minorities and uh, underprivileged youth in Toronto, uh, but more can be done at the minor league level, so now we can now have more people involved at the higher levels also. So there's your corporate activism at its core from Anthony Stewart. Disappointed to hear him say that as a former player. In order to fix the rare and bad occasions of people being stupid, we need to force people into positions of power that they may not deserve to have because of their skin color alone. Let's keep going. 
Anson, I was saying uh, to Kwame Mason, we've recorded an interview with Tara Sloan, and I said, I said to him a year ago after Devontae smith Pelly had the incident in Chicago, which the National Hockey League handled well and Devontae handled brilliantly, I said, you know, Kwame, I say to you, I, I don't see you as black. And I, then I realized, what an idiot I am. Of course I don't see him as black because I have white male privilege. It isn't even in my radar to worry about such a thing. And I, I think to Anthony's point, Anson, that's, uh, you know, representation. Uh, Tara talked about it. I'm colorblind. Of course I'm colorblind because I've never thought about it, right? Please. Please don't think I'm racist, you guys. I'm just an old man. I want to be able to retire soon. This is just so embarrassing that he keeps telling this story. You're an adult, Ron. You're sitting I guess, across from other adults. Just don't be racist. That's the, uh, that's the lesson here. You don't have to change anything. You don't need to prove your non-racism to these guys. It's embarrassing. They're probably embarrassed for you. The main thing we're trying to do is get rid of that unconscious bias, right? Like, you don't think that if you talk to anyone, they won't say they're consciously biased of a situation or judging players for who they are and what they do. But it happens. It's only natural. And that's the thing we have to try to address right now. I'll tell you guys a story. So when I was playing Tier 2 Junior for the Wexford Raiders, I had a scout from the National Hockey League come in for a team and look at my ankle. I had a high ankle sprain during the playoffs. And he was constantly grilling me about why don't I want to play basketball? Why don't I want to play basketball? I was like, I'm a hockey player. What am I talking about basketball with you for? You're supposed to be an NHL scout. Why are you asking these questions? Well, it was the Maple Leaf scout, and they ended up drafting a guy named Chris DeRuiter, who couldn't even hold my hockey bag during the course of the playoffs to win the championship. But it was that unconscious bias that I'm talking about, that he saw me, he saw this other player that wasn't a black player, and automatically he was thinking that he's going to be a National Hockey League prospect, whereas I might not be. I feel like putting my feet up now after this because it's getting so stupid. Unconscious bias is not a thing, Anson Carter. You may, I know you've been told that it's a thing. I know that you probably believe that's a thing if you're spreading it. Um, and your story proves, again, it's against your point. Your story does not prove uh, that the, the, there's a, such a thing as unconscious bias. This guy is pretty much telling you openly his bias. He's telling you that because you're black, you should be playing a different sport than the one that you love. How is that unconscious? How is that just not open, like, racism or bias? <laughs> also, it sounds like to me, again, to discredit your own story, that you mentioned that you had a high ha ankle sprain, which has ended people's careers, by the way. A very serious in injury, uh, more often, or very often more serious than an actual break, an ankle sprain. You're saying that they didn't draft you because of that, and that's somehow unconscious bias? They drafted some crappier player? Uh, probably a lower risk than the guy with the the ankle sprain. Yeah, they were wrong. Uh, they, this player did not end up being as good as you, but it doesn't help your claim when you mention the fact that, oh yeah, they were this racist guy was evaluating my ankle and he decided to go with a less risky draft choice. <laughs> draft choice. Therefore, unconscious bias exists. It just doesn't make any sense. It shows me that these guys don't actually have these conversations. They've just come up uh, with their talking points and they're ready to spit them on uh, Hockey Night in Canada. I personally can't watch any more of this stuff. It's a real shame. The politics in uh, sports has gone way over the deep end. The only people I'll actually listen to, um, Shaquille O'Neal, Stephen A. Smith, and uh, Will Kane are these guys who actually have a head on their shoulders. Don't try to force the conversation, but obviously they're asked to talk about it, and uh, they actually have real points of view on it. They don't just say, mm, diversity, Ron McClain, I apologize. He's got to start adding, adding in like different dance moves to his robot. Uh, my white male privilege. You can't just point to these vague instances, uh, structural racism, uh, unconscious bias. These don't have targets. These don't have solutions. These are just broad things that people who don't know what they're talking about say so they can appear to be woke. If you have actual instances like the Bill Peters thing where we can fire him or tell him, hey, that's not cool, don't ever do that again, don't punch people in the back while they're playing for your team, that's actually detrimental to their physical health then I'll get on board with you. But these broad strokes where we just pretend that we care and we bring out these people that we can, uh, we'll be able to tell sooner or later if they're in it for the money, like the Kaepernicks, that doesn't help anything. That doesn't solve any of the issues. Unless, of course, you're just thinking that everywhere that uh, white people are is an automatically racist institution. I don't think that. I don't think that about any race of people. I wouldn't think that football is inherently racist because it's mostly black people. I wouldn't think that uh, what's uh, the soccer in South America is inherently racist because it's Brazilian people. I wouldn't think that because you know what that is? 
That's actual racism. So point to the actual problem. There are people you can point to, and this goes for not just sports, but in government and in political policies, in civil policies, municipalities, police chiefs, mayors. Point to the actual problem. There are people you can identify, police chiefs, council members. Go for the actual problems, not this vague idea that makes you feel better and doesn't actually get anything done. (laughs) Oh, my God.